Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, only a patient can transport marijuana, is that what you said, or his caregiver, primary caregiver? That's right. correct. Okay, so if we allow in the city or demand in the city that you cultivate within the city limits, and let's say we're out in a warehouse with uh, uh, 2,000 plants being grown in this warehouse, so the only way we can get it to the collective is for each patient to go up and pick their, their share and drive it back to the collective? That's the way California law is written. California law does not, there's no mention of a dispensary or of a storefront within uh, the health and safety code. It only talks about in one paragraph section, if you look at it carefully, uh, when there's group rights, it gives groups the right to cultivate together. Okay, so we're, we're, we're suggesting that there's three collectives per district for a total of 28 collectives. So each one of those collectives, three in my district, has to cultivate on site and on the front door give it to their patients and the back door in the, in the warehouse grow the marijuana? Is that what you're telling us? To make it legal? To make it legal under California, under California law, a collective can't transport on behalf of the collective. So yes, growing it on site would comply with the state of California's law. So I, I, my calculation of my numbers may be off a little bit, but uh, that's 100,000 plants every three months that has to be grown. So we do it in a warehouse, and all of our patients have to go to the warehouse and carry it back to the collective. So we've got, you know, 5,000 people driving to warehouses and picking up marijuana on a regular basis and getting it back. That, that doesn't make sense to me. Um, explain that to me, how that, protects, how that protects the city and gives the police officers a more forcible provision. I don't see how that does that at all. Well, with all due respect, if someone is going to go to the dispensary to get their marijuana, whether the marijuana is cultivated on site or off site, they still have to go there to get it. So it doesn't create an extra step for anyone. If you're going to the location where it's being dispensed and it's being cultivated there, it's one stop for that individual. So you're saying that our, our ordinance should say that all cultivation should be on site of the collective. And we can't have two spaces, even though our ordinance is saying one on site and one off site. Well, I certainly think if the, the off-site is within a reasonable distance and it's practical with respect to where the location of the storefront is, that a reasonable uh, travel for that purpose probably would not be uh, viewed by the courts as uh, a violation of state law. But anything beyond the reasonable movement um, consistent with the cultivation and, and the dispensing is a, a violation of California law. There's no – and I understand – some of the concerns that you all have, and believe me, as you pointed out, you talk to your constituents every day. I hear this issue from friends, neighbors, colleagues, law enforcement, defense lawyers on a daily basis. And on the one hand, uh, it, it's very easy in light of the, the birth of the dispensaries to believe that they're in existence and therefore they're legal uh, as they currently operate and say, well, but if we do this, it's going to make it more difficult for someone else to, to obtain it. It's going to be far more difficult, more expensive to cultivate it. And I understand those arguments, but the, the, the fundamental argument is, is what did the voters of the state of California agree to when they voted for the Compassionate Use Act? And I'm not suggesting that there's anything wrong with the Compassionate Use Act, but just because something operates the way you're used to it operating doesn't necessarily make it legal. And the California Supreme Court has told us how to interpret the Compassionate Use Act and the medical marijuana program. They specifically go through an analysis of how you determine what particular immunities an individual, a primary caregiver, a qualified patient, and a collective or cooperative uh, is entitled to under California law. And under the collective cooperative section, they're only entitled to cultivate, nothing else. That's the only immunity they're given under California law. So in light of that, yes, if you open up a, a collective and you cultivate in Los Angeles and you transport it down the 15, 20 miles, whatever it's going to be to your collective, there, you don't have immunity under California law. If you create an ordinance that allows for that, you are, in fact, 
arguably placing the collective operators that those that are trying to do the right thing and, and, and make marijuana accessible for medicinal purposes in a degree of jeopardy if they are uh, interdicted by law enforcement carrying large quantities of marijuana. That's not what the voters voted for. If you look at the, the legislative history, there's nothing that suggests transporting 65 or 100 pounds of marijuana from one location to another simply because it's more convenient. I understand, but you, you still, so if we keep it within the city of Long Beach, transportation still is not authorized under state law. I mean, it's still not authorized. If they grow it, I don't know, let's, let's take uh, the, the, the old uh, tank farms up in Mr. the Long's district and we make that the planting, the, the, uh, the forest for marijuana. Technically, they can't transport that to any of the collectives in the city, is what you're telling me by state law. That's By correct. state law, they can't unless each one of the patients go to that collect goes to that plant and brings. Then that's where you the that's where you should open up your collective. Is so at that location? That okay, I got that. Okay. Now, the next thing, as a law enforcement person, why do you care if a collective decides to go up to Humboldt County and bring back all the paperwork in order of how many he has to have and all that kind of stuff, and he's bringing back sixty five pounds and Monterey busts him? Why do you care? That's the cost of their doing business. Why, as a law enforcement, why do you care if they get busted in Monterey County? How does that help you enforce the ordinance here in Los Angeles and in, in Long Beach? If they get busted up there, it probably helps you out. <laughs> right, I don't, I don't well, see why we're sitting here worrying about if, they get, if a collective gets busted up in Northern California. I don't, I don't see what, how that helps law enforcement here in Long Beach. Well, I think it does help... Uh, if you extend it to Humboldt County, um, and, and your argument is it makes it easier for us because we don't have to deal with it, I don't find that to be very persuasive. Uh, as law enforcement uh, personnel, our job is to uh, adhere to the law of the state of California as written, whether we like it or we don't like it, whether an individual likes it or doesn't like it. Uh, it there's a California jury instruction that's read to every jury in every criminal case that basically says, you may not like the law the way it is, but will you still follow it? And that's our obligation is to follow the law the way it's written. Certainly when people drive on the freeway and they're going 75 in a 70 mile per hour zone, I guess one can make the argument, what do I care? What, what does law enforcement care? We can put our use sources better someplace else, but you're that's missing, still the law in the state. You're missing the point. That's, that's not what I was talking about. Uh, if a collective decides that they want to take the risk and part of doing business of going up and getting, getting their stuff wherever they get it at and they're coming back down here and they get busted, why is law enforcement do we care? That's my point. Because it know. violates the law and then as a city well, you're the allowing... The violates the law. But as a the city you're... Thing, al let's just close them all down. They all violate the law, sir. Every single one of them that you described here violates the law. So let's just close them all down. That's certainly your prerogative. Right. Okay, but here, here's... Now you made me lose the last point here that I wanted to ask you about. Um, oh, you said that we should have an ordinance that mirrors Los Angeles uh, so we can work together side by side. Uh, I don't believe I said that. I think uh, your ordinance, if it's consistent, if there's consistency amongst all the city ordinances, it certainly makes it more logical and more fair to collective operators and owners so they're not being misled to think that it's okay because this is the ordinance that covers me, uh, says one thing, but now I'm cultivating someplace else and their ordinance says something else. And now, not Humboldt County, but just in Los Angeles, uh, the city of L.A., they're arrested by LAPD for transporting down to Long Beach. That, that's using, my point. You're using that as an argument of why we should uh, uh, restrict cultivation in the city, and there's many, many laws and ordinances in Los Angeles that don't mirror the laws here in Long Beach and vice versa. The best example is fireworks. Right? You, you guys are going to change the law that fireworks are illegal in Los Angeles because we have a problem here in Long Beach because it is illegal and they get their fireworks from Los Angeles. So there's all these different laws that we're not compatible with and it doesn't help law enforcement on one side or the other. So, again, I don't understand how that helps the enforcement of the police officers. It doesn't change anything. What we have now is the same regardless. If, if we make it in the city or outside the city, it's the same things are going to happen. It's not going to change. I don't see it changing. May I address that point? Please. Sir, one thing that will help is when you're conducting an investigation on a dispensary, when you do go into their dispensary to their location, what you're looking for is the amount that they're in possession of toward versus their aggregate membership. So if I go in and if their membership is 5,000, if you are cultivating on site, then I have workable numbers right there that I can deal with, that I work with. 
if you're buying marijuana from the black market, or if you want to say, well, I'm cultivating from Humboldt or whatever, if I'm a conducting an investigation in your city, give me the tools to do it properly. That would be a tool to do it properly versus me trying to figure out where did this come from, How, you know, was it intercepted by the high patrol, was it not? Give me the tools to do the job to enforce the law.